welcome to my studio. I'm Sandra Cohn. I'm a Seattle-based newborn and family and portrait photographer. And I'm so excited you're here today because I am going to share five tips for how to create beautiful, soft, natural looking light with strobes and flash when you're working inside. So let's do it. Okay, tip number one, use a large modifier. And that's because the bigger our light source, the softer the light. And when you're wanting to create that soft window light look, using a large modifier is really going to help you achieve that, okay? Tip number two is once you have that large modifier on your light, bring that light and that modifier in nice and close to your subject. All right, and that is because the closer your light, the softer your light's going to be. And again, we're really trying to create that beautiful, soft window light look, right? So you can bring that light in nice and close and it's just gonna wrap around your subject and it's gonna be so beautiful. Okay, tip number three, once that light is nice and close, like two to three feet away from your subject, I want you to turn the power on your light down. <laughs> okay, maybe this sounds like a no-brainer, but this is why. So the closer your light is to your subject, the softer that light is going to be, and the closer your light is to your subject, the brighter your light is going to be. And I know one of the things I hear from people all the time is that they stay away from using strobes and flash in their work because they don't like that harsh, flashy looking light that they think they're going to get when using a strobe or a flash. Well, one of the best ways to avoid getting harsh, flashy looking light is to, to make sure that the power on that light is turned down. So that light's nice and close, it's gonna be soft, the power is turned down, and again, it's just gonna fall softly on your subject and create that beautiful window light look, okay? Now, that brings us to our fourth tip, which is this. People say, okay, Sandra Cohn, I get it, you want me to turn the light on, you know, the power of my light down, but to what? And well, to whatever your light meter tells you to do. So tip number four is you're gonna use a handheld light meter, okay? So what a handheld light meter will do is it's gonna help you determine the exact power your light needs to be at for you to shoot the way you want to. Now, I personally love shooting wide open. I'm always at like an F2 or F2.8 um, because when I'm shooting wide open like that, I can create that beautiful shallow depth of field that looks like my images when I'm using window light. And again, I am wanting to recreate that beautiful window light look when working with strobes and flash. Um, so what I do is I bring my light nice and close, I turn the power on my light down, and I use my light meter to help me determine what level of power my light needs to be at. All right, it's a great little tool. Go out and get yourself one. Okay. Tip number five. So tip number five has to do with light direction. So now that we know that we're going to use a large modifier, we're gonna bring that modifier in nice and close. We're gonna turn the power on our light down and we're going to use a light meter to help determine what aperture we're going to be shooting at. I just want you to take care and make sure that your light is falling on your subject in a way that is flattering. Now listen, our eyes and our brains are used to seeing light fall from above, right? Because that's what the sun does. It, you know, we're, we all just walk around seeing people lit this way naturally. So when people are lit from above, it's just naturally appealing and flattering. Well, what happens sometimes when people are using lighting inside, using artificial lighting, they get into a situation where they're accidentally uplighting their subjects, meaning that light's coming up this way and it's just not pretty. This is something that I see all the time in newborn photography, because what will happen is people will bring a baby in and they'll, they'll have that baby lying down and they'll have their light positioned in such a way that they're accidentally uplighting the baby, giving them that like flashlight under the chin horror movie look, right? It doesn't look good on anybody. So this is how you make sure you're not doing that. When you have your light set up, if you're working with a baby, if you're working with a little kid, or maybe you're even like doing boudoir photography and you have an adult lying down, just make sure that your subject's head is always pointing towards the light. 
when your subject's head's pointing towards the light, then you know that that light's going to be falling down the face in a way that's flattering. If you turn that around and you have your subject's feet pointing towards the light, like you have a little baby and their feet's facing the light, you're gonna be accidentally uplighting them and it's just not gonna be pretty. So pay attention to that. All right, you guys, those are my five tips for creating beautiful, soft, natural looking light with strobes and flash. Let's recap really fast. Tip one, use a large modifier. Tip two, bring that modifier in nice and close. Tip three, turn the power on your light down. Tip four, use a handheld light meter to help you determine what power your light needs to be at. And tip five, make sure that your light is always falling on your subject from the top down. All right, um, I hope that was helpful. If you would like more information on how to create natural looking light with strobes and flash, then check out my book, Crafting the Natural Light Look. It teaches my one light approach to creating this beautiful, soft, natural looking light with strobes and flash. And here's one of my favorite things about the book is that I have information inside um, on how to do that for both film and digital photographers. So I'm a film photographer. It was really important for me to talk about that in the book. And, um, and then of course, obviously I have information for digital photographers too. So check it out. You can get it right here at b &H, either in person or online. And if you wanna see some of my work or you just wanna connect, then check me out on Instagram at Sandra Cohn or visit my website that I have just for photographers to teach them how to create beautiful light with strobes and flash. And you can find me at sandraconeducation.com for that. All right, thanks for being with me today and I hope that this was helpful.